So welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining in. I'm Carsten Thoms, uh, working for ATMS. And mostly, uh, most of the uh, day, I work uh, on Project XTEX and uh, help customers to work, uh, develop things with XTEX. And I'm a daily user of Eclipse. Um, I'm also committed on the Eclipse platform, um, specifically in uh, the platform project itself and PDE. Um, but this is what I mainly do in my spare time. Um, today, I wanted to uh, give you an overview of um, what's happening in the Eclipse platform project, what happened since last year, and a little bit of uh, outlook uh, what things are coming up. Let's see uh, who is actually working on the platform. Um, uh, it's a very um, broad uh, reach of uh, companies uh, which are working, and uh, interesting, um, when I saw that uh, I, uh, th this graph, this diagram, is that Microsoft shows up, and that uh, was not the case last year. And you see that uh, it's, the project is a little bit dominated by three companies and uh, many, many small contributions. Um, and many people are working on, um, on the platform. And as a good um, cleanup process, we uh, regularly um, yeah, look who is actively contributing to the platform and who uh, not anymore. And so every, day, every year, some people decide, OK, um, that's not my uh, work anymore, and they get removed from the committer list. Um, quite a bunch this uh, year. But of course, um, people are going, and other people are coming. And especially on, on the platform side, there's uh, some uh, growth, and that's good. So it shows um, people are still interested in um, doing things here in, in, um, in the project. Let's look at um, the contribution activity. Um, you see it's um, roughly 400 commits per month um, which come in and into the, uh, into the project. Um, and you have to say, OK, um, this is all going through the Garrett process. So um, one commit does not mean that it's just one change. This can uh, be many uh, changes and a long review process uh, until actually one commit comes into the, uh, the code base. So um, the activity is uh, actually quite higher. You see that, um, um, yeah, mo most of, more or less a uh, constant number of um, contributors are coming in. We're still r roughly 80, 100 contributors working on the platform. And um, slowly growing number of committers and companies um, that, um, that are participating. But it's a good sign. It's not going down, it's going up. So um, the activity grows. And there's plenty of work to do, um, especially working down bugs. Uh, we still have uh, roughly 22,000 um, open bugs um, uh, in the platform, um, except for JDT. I'm, I left out JDT. There's uh, also a bunch. And um, you see, okay, um, vast majority are, are in UI related things, uh, UI, SWT, P2, and these are the, the, the other things, and distributed uh, over the other tickets. Um, and of course, bugs also get fixed. Bug fixing rate, um, it's roughly 200 to 300 uh, bugs that are actually fixed each month. So if you recap this over the year, it's uh, yeah, almost 3,000 bugs. Uh, which uh, were closed every year, fixed. There are quite a, um, of other uh, bugs that are closed because of inactivity and so on, and uh, this is an automatic process. We, um, if someone did not uh, respond for quite some years on a bug, then it seems that, uh, not important anymore. I thought that, um, yeah, the comp uh, that the activity, yeah, the, the impression is uh, that the activity uh, slowly goes up, but. Um, uh, then I look back in the years, and uh, we see in the early days of Eclipse, um, the activity was quite higher. Um, and since uh, almost um, eight years, uh, it's almost constant. Uh, a little bit up and down, but um, yeah, but still continuing activity. Since last year, one important thing that has changed is the new release cadence of um, um, of Eclipse, and this has some implications. Let's put this a li little bit on timeline. Last year we had this talk, and we are here. Now, since that time, we have four new releases of Eclipse and two releases of Java. 
So and you can, uh, you can understand that uh, this is um, keeping us quite busy. The JDT team um, has uh, plenty to do with just keeping up the pace uh, of Java. Yeah, and the platform team has also to do something. And it's not that we only do this release uh, build once uh, each quarter. There are a couple of uh, milestone builds um, in between. So, um, yeah, we have um, some sprints to the milestones, and, um, yeah, you know, that's um, quite pressuring. And the time between the last milestones and actually the re release is quite short. And we're pretty good in matching um, the time on, uh, um, and uh, always deliver uh, Eclipse on time. But sometimes it also happens that uh, things are really get crapped up. Um, there was actually one innocent change um, uh, here in, in, the, in the release, and um, this caused that everything had to be reverted and uh, respin um, um, before the actual release came out. For the user, nothing happened. Eclipse delivered on time. And uh, people like Denis, who are responsible for keeping the things uh, running there. The milestones have also um, an implication, because we have also code freezes. Um, before The week before um, each milestone, there's actually uh, nothing happening, really. So, um, of course, things are getting improved, but, but they had to be uh, waited until the, uh, the milestone was out. So we have to uh, always one week shut down. And then p things are queuing up, and right after the milestone, then we uh, can continue to work. And we, within the milestone week, we have to test and uh, fix regressions and so on. Yeah, but um, I know that um, we don't have all the time just of working forward on Eclipse. So this takes up a little bit of time. The new release cadence has also uh, very important uh, implications on semantic versioning. Um, whenever something changes since the last release in one of the plugins, we have to increment the version of the plugin. Uh, we get this um, told by, um, by the Garrett builds, but um, they all say, okay, um, now you forgot this plugin, now you forgot that plugin, this is not up to date anymore. And this is quite a hell, especially after a release. So all the changes that are pending uh, out there, they were uh, tested and built against the last release. And now we have to do all the things again. So um, this is uh, keeping us quite busy. And um, uh, yeah, we have to build and build and build and build again. And um, yeah, this, I, need, I think we need some tooling um, that, that improves this process. Um, we, uh, we have to do this now every quarter, and uh, yeah, that's uh, quite hell. Another thing which was really annoying is um, the, um, the merge strategy on Garrett. It was fast forward only, so that means um, that um, you only have to, um, you are able only to commit something which is uh, when it's really on the top of the commit history, and it's this was nearly uh, the, uh, not the case. Um, you see, uh, um, when you build um, something and it was just, uh, just finished, it's already outdated. So you have to build, rebuild it again. This um, uh, leads lead sometimes to um, the strange situations that I stood up at night just to trigger the build. And when I stood up uh, in the early mornings, I hoped that I could uh, commit something. During the days, it was almost impossible to, uh, to get a really um, build through and um, submit it. Fortunately, this has changed two weeks back, or three weeks. Um, so we now have the strategy uh, that uh, we have uh, rebased if necessary. And uh, if you look into the uh, Garrett history, um, then now we only have conflicts where there are actually conflicts. Before, almost everything had merge conflicts. And this um, was really slowing down the contribution process. The discussion came up uh, last year already um, uh, from Michael Kepler. Uh, Michael, could you wait? Uh, okay, here. Yeah. Um, he uh, yeah, proposed to change this. Okay, then he said, okay, good idea. And then it was rejected by the uh, program committee. And fortunately, this came up again, and uh, yeah, we're, we're improving on that. 
In the Garrett queue, we have currently about 325 open changes, and the oldest one is from uh, 2010. So um, yeah, maybe not the highest chance to get this in. Um, so this means um, we have to urgently uh, work on that um, and um, see what, what coming in and uh, make the changes into a state where they are either accepted or abandoned. So these are already things that are fixed or supposed to fix something. And the only thing that we have to do is to make it in, into a state where it's acceptable to get, and get into the project. Since we have already so old um, commits, um, sometimes we, we come in a situation that uh, people who once contributed it, um, a patch uh, do not have a valid um, ECA anymore. And then things become complicated. In the easiest state, you, um, you write him a mail and he updates um, the, uh, his ECA. This was uh, the case for this change. Um, so, uh, but you have to figure out who is it, uh, write in a mail, wait for, um, uh, for, for, um, for an answer, and so on. But there will be also um, changes where people moved. They contributed. They, at that point of time, they were totally fine uh, with the change. They had a valid ACA. But uh, Garrett will reject um, working on that change. And then th things become complicated because you have then to go through the, through the program committee to really get this change in. So let's look a little bit uh, what we actually worked on. Um, and if you look into the, uh, in the history of the last year, then um, you will recognize that we have many, many mass changes, cleanup changes, formatting, different patterns, uh, throwing uh, away stuff, marking things deprecated, um, yeah, add uh, type uh, information to untyped uh, um, uh, uh, things. And um, yeah, that's quite a bunch of work and uh, also work um, which is not appreciated enough, I think. Um, for me, it's very, very important that uh, we have to, that we work on cleaning up the code base. It must be uh, a joy of reading the code base, otherwise you don't work on that. You don't want to work on crappy shit. Um, but mass changes means also mass reviews, and there things become complicated. Um, sometimes you have um, changes uh, that um, uh, span hundreds of classes. That's quite hard to work on that. And um, you, you will oversee something, or um, yeah, and, and, and you have to repeat um, the whole process with every uh, change, an update on that change. So that's quite involving to uh, get these uh, changes through. There was one special contributor, Carsten Hammer, who submitted tons of those mass updates. Um, I think he has some automated way to do this. Um, but it was quite a lot of work to get through these changes. There are still uh, tons of changes in JT from him, and uh, yeah, will uh, still uh, take a while until they, um, these are coming in. Dropping things is important, um, and one important thing that uh, was removed is uh, all the 32-bit support. So the only platforms that are now currently supported are uh, 64 bits for uh, Linux, macOS, and Win Windows. Um, of course, there are other users who wanted maybe to, uh, to use um, uh, other platforms, but uh, yeah, it's just not maintainable for us. And it's really important to clean up things and uh, making uh, the platform more attractive. Otherwise, it erodes. And uh, yeah, you can only attract uh, people if, um, if, it, if, if things look nice. So, but when you do changes, um, of course you come also to regressions. This is happening. Um, there's a saying which says, um, you, can, uh, you can't make an omelet without breaking eggs. So um, go one step uh, sometimes back, but go three steps forward. That's important. And, um, don't be afraid of, uh, of in, uh, introducing regressions until they um, can be fixed. And um, this is where the team is really uh, working good on. 
So when something changes, there will be uh, different people um, who actually use the broken code, and they will recognize this, and yeah, then uh, things are uh, cleaned up again. My personal pet is uh, performance. Um, since I am working every day on large projects with Eclipse, um, yeah, uh, this is for me important to, to work fast in these projects, and uh, it must be a joy of use um, um, with, um, with Eclipse. And the first um, place where this uh, becomes important is on startup. Um, so we looked at uh, what's actually happening during the startup process. Uh, some things you can um, influence and others you can't. Of course, Eclipse is, a, um, is an open platform, a very flexible platform, uh, a large platform, and if you start such a large thing up, then many things will happen um, that need to happen. Um, but uh, you can look a little bit into the details um, where you can maybe defer heavy work into a background or remove code which uh, is not executed anymore. And uh, all of these things are, um, um, are helping slowly to get better there. One of the biggest changes in Equinox there is um, the possibility to um, actually um, initialize the bundles in parallel. That's um, by default off um, because it's a little bit experimental at the moment. But you can enable that by setting a specific property. And uh, if you set uh, the property Equinox start level thread count to zero, then it uh, will um, use the uh, number of av available processors uh, to activate uh, the bundles with the different start levels in parallel. Um, I did not recognize the problem with that, but um, also uh, I did not really recognize a real speed up here. Um, then last year I talked about this famous bug, um, the, uh, the slow scrolling on um, Mac OS, uh, which is um, a, a performance regression open for many years. It's one of the most commented bugs ever. It has uh, roughly 400 comments on it and multiple t attempts to fix it. And um, many things were fixed, but uh, we did not find the cause. Um, and finally, we got from one of the users uh, an important hint. He said um, there, there's a possibility to, um, to set um, yeah, um, Eclipse to work on low resol resolution only if you um, go into the properties view of, of the um, Eclipse application itself in the Finder. And then um, this really speeded uh, things by 1.6 up. And uh, yeah, then we looked what's actually happening in there. And uh, then we found that we actually could remove code there, um, which caused that regression. And finally, this was fixed. For interactive performance, um, there is already um, a long existing feature on um, the UI responsive monitoring. You can enable that, um, but for the SDK, it's now enabled by default. So whenever things are um, potentially long running in the UI thread, um, this performance monitoring will um, throw out um, information um, about the current stack traces um, in, in the UI. And then you can figure out, OK, the, here's something happening which, uh, uh, which slows down the UI. Let's look at it. And, um, you come sometimes to funny uh, code pl places which actually lo you know, look harmless. Um, and uh, it, within this code, there's, for example, uh, this thing here, get IP address. Um, you don't have to know what, what's actually happening there. But this little thing um, um, sometimes uh, had the, re uh, had the um, implication that um, yeah, IP resolution, uh, you, you, um, the host name was uh, computed, and you have actually a network connection open. and this could be refactored um, quite much. It's maybe it looks harmless, but if you look in the, into the um, performance monitoring, it's uh, yeah, it takes a third of a second just to execute that method, and this very often. And uh, yeah, so um, and this was just refactored a little bit, and um, then this um, completely got uh, gone away. Yesterday, I got um, an interesting tweet from Eric Williams, uh, Red Hat, and um, he said, okay, um, I am comparing here. I've, I've already, I've used an old 4.9, old 4.9. That's actually um, 
Eclipse 2018 uh, 9. So that's just one year old IDE. But uh, compared uh, to, to uh, the current state, it behaves much slower. And we, had, uh, we have done many things on improvements uh, of the performance already for Photon. Uh, so things are moving on. And the, the, these are sometimes just small changes. But in the sum, they do something. So coming a little bit uh, to the dark theme, um, this is also um, something which uh, yeah, is worked on every, um, um, with every release. Um, and you know that uh, some uh, um, operating systems like Mac, uh, they have also now uh, themselves a dark theme. And Eclipse can uh, react on that. So uh, when you have enabled dark theme on Mac OS, then um, Eclipse will open up uh, with dark theme by default. Um, and uh, to compare a little, little bit, um, let's look um, at the old um, Eclipse, old 4.11. And you uh, can recognize the difference, um, like the scroll bars here, for example, that uh, they show up dark, and the title bar show, shows up dark. So it uh, looks more consistent. And if you look into the uh, preferences view, you see it's, uh, yeah, this is not really nice, and uh, it looks much nicer here. Or context menus also show up dark mode. So this becomes now slowly really consistent. Let's look at a little bit more other uh, usability features, some small ones. For new users um, that um, have an empty workspace, um, they may not really know how to work with Eclipse, uh, and uh, they don't have to figure out. The, the first information that they uh, uh, can get is, you can create a project or import existing projects. So really small thing, um, but uh, it has an impact. And also, um, we are working through uh, all the dialogues and um, text mes messages and say, OK, what, what do we actually read here? Is there text that, we, uh, that is not necessary? Can we improve the message that, uh, that people are reading? And also on the buttons, uh, what, what is the action that we are doing there? Another thing which uh, has been worked on is um, icons. Um, uh, we have a new committer from SAP, Matthias Becker, who is uh, really hard working on um, providing new icons or uh, replace existing icons by, by high-risk icons. Um, if you look at here, it's uh, a little bit clumsy um, if, it, uh, uh, if you sh uh, look, look at this in a high-risk mode. And um, now uh, we have um, icons that look better or like like the markers here, they're, they're pixely. They have m uh, more pixels here than here. Yeah, that's looking better now. Who does know what this, um, this icon here means? Ah, one, one person. Uh, can you tell? It's a filter icon. OK, if, if you really look, um, yeah, it's fiddling. So you have something uh, which comes in, and not everything comes through. But um, it's actually not, not uh, what you uh, in, see in other IDEs. So and um, yeah, we replaced this by a funnel. There were some discussions running up um, um, about this. I, yeah, if you put some water into the funnel, the same amount of water comes through. <laughs> but it's um, used in all the other IDEs. Um, so. Um, to, uh, icons like that. And we have to rethink what do we actually see in the ID. And there are plenty more things um, uh, that uh, come up in the IDE. And the uh, best way to um, see all the features is uh, look the movies uh, from Holger Forman. Uh, Holger, are you here? Ah, OK. There he is. He is investing much time and uh, showing up great videos. I'll show you an example about the current. Here are some general and Git improvements of the Eclipse IDE 2019-09. Improvements that have been added since the last release in June three months ago. To display shortcuts when they are invoked, for example for presentations like this one, there is a new option in the Keys Preferences page, which can be opened, as you can't see yet, by hitting Ctrl L twice. While activating it, you can see how the command with the corresponding key will be displayed.
But for most of you, the next feature will be probably more exciting. Quick Search used to be part of the Spring Tools, has been contributed and is now part of the Eclipse platform. The Quick Search dialog can be opened via the Search menu or, as you can see now, thanks to the previous feature, via Ctrl, Alt, Shift, L. Search as you type makes Quick Search feel really fast, even without having an index of the content of all files. Enter the search string into the field on the left. An asterisk can be used as wildcard. The text field on the right can be used for a file name pattern. When a matching line is selected, the area below shows the matching line together with some lines above and below it. With a double click, you jump to the search result. To open more than one result in one go, choose the option Keep Open. Okay, uh, so I don't want uh, to um, do just uh, what, you, what you can could watch on YouTube. So look at that. Uh, you can even uh, participate in creating the videos. However, um, it has um, a GitHub project open, and um, there you can contribute to these videos. And um, I think it's really nice uh, uh, um, to show up the, uh, the, uh, the things that have been added um, for, for each release in Java, in Git, and uh, in the platform itself. And, uh, and is, uh, is his girlfriend or um, the speaker? Is the speaker your girlfriend? Yeah, okay. Her, his girlfriend, uh, he, he, uh, she has a really nice voice in explaining uh, all the things. And uh, that's a great initiative, Holger. Thank you. So let's uh, talk a little bit um, what's coming up. Um, and first thing is um, the navigator view will disappear. Not yet. This is in preparation. It will take some time. Um, I actually use uh, the navigator view often to see uh, really uh, what's happening on, on the file system, to see class files and hidden files and so on. And, um, yeah, it should be replaced by, uh, by the uh, Project Explorer. Um, and actually, the Project Explorer needs to, be in, uh, come, to come into a state where it's actually worth replacing uh, the navigator view. Um, this will be some uh, work. There's an umbrella bug open uh, to track all the other things that are happening there. And for the moment, you, you will see that um, uh, the navigator is deprecated. So you already get an indication, oh, there will things um, happen. Yes, but the question is, uh, yeah, what's the next big thing? I can't tell. I don't know what uh, what next big, big thing um, is, what it should be. Actually, um, the idea is nice. Um, we, we just have to improve it. Um, make it more concise, make it more responsive, make it more faster, um, more usable. Um, but uh, I don't know what, what, uh, what is going on uh, where we could say, okay, this is uh, really revolutionary. If you have an idea, talk with us. So let's talk a little bit about things that I would like to have. Um, of course, uh, for me, performance, 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 performance. So um, um, it's just ideas. So um, if you read the APIs from Eclipse, um, they, they are 20 years old. And um, they look 20 years old. So, and they, they can't be changed. So we have to think about new implementation patterns. Um, maybe you could do something more reactive, um, but this has to be added. We have to design those APIs on top of that, what, what really exists. We should um, look uh, where are things happening in loops um, and uh, doing one thing after the other and uh, this in a sequential way. Are there possibilities to improve this by parallelization? There are parallel streams, for example, um, in, in, um, in Java API. We can uh, use jobs, whatever. Um, uh, we have to look where are th costly things happening, especially in the UI thread, which do not have to happen in the UI thread. So um, how, how can we improve that? I heard yesterday an idea from Max. Max, are you here? Um, he had the idea um, about um, yeah, refactoring the uh, launcher. The launcher itself uh, needs, an, uh, needs an JRE to be executed. And um, there um, we cannot um, actually uh, package a JRE with Eclipse. 
Um, and his idea is, um, yeah, let's maybe make a native launcher, uh, which gives you the opportunity to download a JRE on demand. That's possible. So I like the idea, um, but it's, uh, at the moment, it's just an idea. And pain in the ass is always P2. Um, so the, uh, the error messages from P2 are, are um, um, crappy. The performance is crappy, and so on. One thing that I would like uh, where people would invest something is in really usability engineering. Um, when we do projects at uh, TTMS for customers, we have some usability engineers who design um, um, a, um, uh, yeah, the user interface uh, for applications. And uh, they talk with the users and uh, yeah, apply um, yeah, knowledge about designing and making uh, um, applications more usable, easy, easy, easy to use, fun to use. And it would be great if people show up that, um, who are usability engineers and rethink um, how this uh, IDE would work. We are all technicians. We can't do that. That's, that's not our story. Um, we need um, help. And of course, um, work down what's um, already um, in solving. And therefore, we need contributors, more and more contributors. But let us ask ourselves, are we attractive for, uh, as a platform for contributors? Let's be honest, the Eclipse platform or desktop IDEs or desktop applications in general is not the hottest shit on earth at the moment. Um, and of course, those projects um, are attracting new um, blood. To, them, uh, to, to contribute things. We need to think, how can we make the experience better to contribute? How do we um, attract those people? As I said, for me, it's very important that um, the code base is clean, concise, documented, whatever. Also, setting up workspaces to work on uh, Eclipse should be easy. Uh, the contribution process must be easy. That's, uh, good. That's not the story of Eclipse platform itself. It's a um, thing of um, for Eclipse in general. But there are things that we could do. First is um, respond on bugs. Look what, what bugs are coming in. Um, is there enough information to, um, to um, yeah, know what's actually happening, how to reproduce this? Can, um, can you interact with this user? Maybe he's willing to contribute on himself, but he doesn't know how. He says, okay, it's always complicated. I know. I need an ECA, I need Garrett account, I need uh, an Eclipse environment uh, where I can work on, and this has to be error-free, and so um, that's not that complicated. With Oomph, we have a perfect um, example where, where you just have to drink coffee and you have a working environment. So, um, sorry, um, and guide those contributors. So say, great that you contributed something, but there is a little bit uh, that you have to consider. Uh, help him to, be, uh, to get better, help him, uh, them to, to uh, get the uh, changes into a state where it's accepted. And embrace change. So um, accept, uh, welcome if, if people are thinking differently than you and um, help you to um, uh, use Eclipse in a different way as, as you used to. Um, of course, things will um, break maybe and uh, those people are, need to be educated. Yeah, and um, this is something that you uh, could do. And um, what I see on the Garrett changes, especially on the old one, yeah, um, someone has contributed a change, and then it got stale. Um, and maybe the, uh, the contributor is not reactive anymore. So um, just pick this up. Work together on these changes to get this into a state to, uh, to uh, be submitted. And yeah, so finally, I have to thank all the people who work on Eclipse, who um, contribute to Eclipse. There are so many great um, uh, committers there um, uh, from whom you can learn a lot of things. For me, why I'm working on Eclipse is I learn things. Um, uh, how other people think, um, how um, code works, what is the right implementation pattern, um, what is faster than the other. The Eclipse platform is a perfect example where you can work on that, where you can uh, profile, where you can uh, do usability engineering, where you can work on patterns, whatever. And there are many, many, many uh, uh, people out there who are helping. So thank them. And 
Especially, at last but not least, thank you for attending my session. And don't forget to evaluate it. Thank you.